FYBJ Main, who recently spoke with No Jumper about an encounter with the rapper, revealed on Instagram on set of the direct messages he had received from Offset. Let's just be real. Why Offset ain't signed these moves, Jay, man? Let's break. Offset said that the comedian had embellished his account of attempting to get him to sign a cereal box. When Jay Main discovered Adam22 had already signed it, he allegedly told Offset to decline. Welcome back, it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. I just feel like if you did, he would he would have done it. Nah, he said no. I bro, what's up with you? I was on some cool shit, and you come playing with my name. Offset began. But how the game work we run into each other again, it's all love brah. You capped like I kicked you out, I was on some cool shit, but you on some sucka shit like Nick can't reach you. In response, J Main wrote back, Bro I be on some comedian shit, please don't take it personal, I want to stay locked in with y'all. And I never said you kicked me out. Bro, he would've just signed this shit, he say, why he write that shit? And Wack 100 claims that Offset beef with Lil Baby started after Offset punched 42 Doug during a dice game. The contentious music manager made a variety of accusations regarding the feud during an appearance on his 100 Ent show. He claimed to have observed the altercation, which happened three years prior to Doug going viral. Today I watched it, got in the middle of it, stopped it, he said. It would have blazed that night over dice. That shit, young turn, they can't wipe no bitch. If it wasn't for Wack, that would have been in the mouth news that night. I told Doug, you all the way wrong. Wack 100 went on to describe how the two rappers would often lose thousands of dollars each time they played dice games. Did it like a gangster when Doug Pockets took his money and fired on Doug. Doug's desire to cease playing seemed to cause things to go left. According to Wack, Offset told the Detroit native, as long as it's my dice, you got to shoot. But Doug walked out of the studio, leading to a confrontation between the two. Did it like a gangster. What the Start whipping out. I grabbed 42 Doug, told his little homies, y'all put that up. He had his little goons when they wasn't budget. I said, Offset, you know there's gonna be hell to pay come the morning. We were at QC Studios. Wack claimed he was able to break up the altercation before it got out of hand, and that there may have been numerous casualties in a firefight. Right before Doug sparked, he wouldn't have been around for the Offset and some of his people would have been dead. QC Studios would have been under investigation. He said. Later, WAC 100 asserted that because 42 Doug was signed to Baby's 4PF imprint, this is how the whole beef started between Offset and Lil Baby. WAC 100 came under fire on Instagram from Boosie Badaz when the latter posted something implying that BG was a rat. Boosie responded by calling WAC a clown. He wasn't the only one, either, as other rappers and fans had harsh reactions to the charge. We are the exposures, Wack began in the caption. I'm a little sick right now, but the show must go on. At 1090 Jake MS send it Remo my war just on it new big Hollywood. Me knowing you, you're already on the case. I woke it up now you research and narrate Merry Xmas to all and to all a good night from the hashtag exposures. In response to the post, Boosie commented, Dis he wasn't the only rapper to respond. The game also wrote, exposers, with a thinking emoji. Many fans chimed in as well, with one writing, bro it's crazy as hell a n can do 15 years and come out and still be called a rat like whack weird f. Another added, the man did 13 years for a gun charge, I think he might be the worst rat in history. Cut the nonsense bruh. BG was recently released from prison having received a 14-year sentence in 2012. He entered a guilty plea to one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice and two counts of handgun possession. Following his release, he collaborated on the Project Choppers and Bricks with Gucci Mane. As everyone knows, Boosie Badaz enjoys voicing his ideas. Though occasionally they might come out as absurd, he might have a point. A rapper from Louisiana is still doing a lot of interviews with Flat TV, and they recently had another interview. The two have already talked about how difficult the YNW Melly murder trial has been. They want to retry the process after the first attempt ended in a mistrial. It has been brutally retreated. It was supposed to take place in October, but it appears that February 5th is the new date. Boosie Badaz expressed his intense sympathy for Melly and his family. He has a nagging notion that the court will stop at nothing to put you behind bars when they want you. Boosie genuinely believes that Melly's prolonged incarceration allowed the new 8 to 4 law to be approved. When they want you, they want you. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, Florida passed a law where only eight votes are required for someone to receive the death penalty. I knew that I knew they wanted them bad when they waited for that law to get passed. Before, it had to be a unanimous vote, but the goalpost is now closer. Boosie feels it is messed up. They waited all the way to that law got passed to take him to trial. The fact that YNW Melly, 24, could receive a death sentence as a result of his legal situation infuriates Boosie Badaz. Boosie Badaz recently discussed the ongoing double murder investigation involving YNW Melly during an interview with Vlad TV. Boosie claimed that he may have been inspired to consider becoming a defense attorney after attending the first trial back in June. 
Yeah, I, I reached out to him, bro. I met his mom and... Following the declaration of a mistrial in the first trial in July, YNW Melly is currently awaiting his second trial. The possibility exists that the artist might face the death penalty if proven guilty. He is accused of killing Jovi and Sack Chaser, two YNW associates, with gunfire. Instead, their deaths, according to Melly's defense, were the result of a drive-by gunshot. Boosie mentions in the interview that he had previously met Melly in an airport, recalling the encounter with fondness. He remembers the teenage rapper buying him magazines and food while saying, You ain't spending nothing. He bought all my magazines. He bought my food. You ain't spending nothing, OG no yet. Boosie also mentions seeing the 24 year old's mother, calling her real and remarking that she made him think of his own mother. Then I met his mama while he was in. She real, bro. You know, she real. After that law passed, they took him straight to f***ing trial, bro. 8 4 is f crazy it's unheard of death is unanimous i was, I was so pissed off about that have you ever heard I, that before you're never in no other damn state he expressed how he you feels as though the vote is unfair citing his own personal experiences boosie explains that at one point he was facing the death penalty but it was later switched to a life sentence so that he could more easily be convicted 10 to 2. he claims that in any other state the death penalty would have to be a unanimous decision 84 is fucking crazy as unheard of. The rapper claims that when they first met, Melly might have even been with Jevy and Sack Chaser, whom he is suspected of killing. Boosie spoke about the trial and became agitated when he mentioned how the court would permit an 8-4 vote in favor of the death penalty. The rapper said, I was so mad about that. And death is unanimous. Yeah. He continues by saying that the delay was brought on by a new law that was passed soon before Melly's trial. They was waiting for that law to pass. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comment section and most importantly subscribe. See you.